Sharon H here. In today's video, we're going to cover toxic people, things they say and do, and how to deal with them. Just remember, everything in this video is coming from my perspective and viewpoint. Take what advice you want and let the rest slide right off of you. Like that Number one, they have you questioning yourself, your overreactions. Ever tried to address something with someone if they've hurt or embarrassed you, only to be told you're oversensitive or you're overreacting <gasps> unnecessarily. Even when you're hurt, is valid as hell. You know the ones that go on to belittle you even further by insinuating you're being dramatic and irrational. No. It's all in your head, your imagination. You're just looking for an argument, no matter how upset you feel or belittled or small. It's always on you. It's your fault that you're hypersensitive. You couldn't take a joke or you just took it out of context. Let me say with these fu fu fuckers, a joke is often an insult wrapped up in sarcasm. And if your gut's telling you that they just kicked you in it with their backhanded, passive aggressive crap, then believe it if you know someone like this. And even for one second, buy into that rubbish that there's something wrong with you, then give yourself an uppercut. These kinds of people are masters. They engulf everywhere they tread with toxic Humes. Number two, they will ghost you if it's not all about them. This ain't the truth. I don't know what the hell is. If you're unfamiliar with the term ghosting or unsure if it's been happening to you, it's when someone you thought was a friend without warning just cuts you off. Wipes you without rhyme, reason or explanation. Whether it be someone you've been fu fu fucking good to who just suddenly stops acknowledging your social media posts. You can see is all over everything everybody else's. They ignore your comments on their posts but reply to other people's. They no longer reply to texts or messages. I mean I've done this when people I feel may be crossing my boundaries but when so-called friends do it without good reason. Perhaps they randomly unfriend or block you when you've no clue what the hell's wrong. These people are sending you a message by wiping you completely for absolutely nothing or making themselves visibly invisible to you. Let the twat twat twa waffles perish in their toxic flames. You don't need that shit in your life. Number three, you never know which side of them you're going to get. These people are often the worst kinds to deal with. They're negative toxic vibes are exhausting. You're forever walking on eggshells because you never know what version of them you're going to get from one day to the next. One day they're chatting and friendly, joking and fun. The next day they're passive, aggressive, temperamental pr pr pricks. Unpredictable and as up and down as a mad woman sh sh shit. They'll be love bombing you one day and ghosting you the day after. Absolutely mind numbing f f fuckwits. Yes, let me say that one more time for those in the back. Absolutely, absolutely mind-numbing fuckwits. There is absolutely no way to be yourself around someone that can switch their demeanor on a dime. You never know when you've got them and you sure as hell never know where you stand. Number four, they're as manipulative as hell. They are gold medalists in manipulation and they cannot be underestimated. These kinds often target empathetic people because they know they can twist, bend, and turn them to suit. They play on the sympathies of others and you can bet your own ass they've always got a woe is me tale. This seems to be the modus operandi of toxic people. They play the victim card to lure in the unsuspecting. They will turn people against the innocent in the blink of an eye if it serves their agenda too. They find so much power and strength in playing people off of each other. They will backstab and belittle another. Then they will run to the person they've just been backstabbing and tell them that it was in fact the other person putting them down. These fu fu fuckers are adept at that one. Let me tell you, they love bomb and discard like it's sport. They always have someone new waiting in the wing for when they kick you to the curb. Number five, they'll be first to ride the limo with you, but they won't ride the train. These people won't be with you through the hardship. They won't check on you or look out for you or encourage you. They won't support your humble beginnings. In fact, they'll most likely pretend they don't see you at all when you're starting out something and need a friend's support. They'll never be there cheering for you 
or picking you up when you fall. These kinds are often more likely to be secretly sabotaging you too. They think by watching from the shadows. And trust me, they'll be watching. They think you'll never know. It's been them drilling holes in your boat, hoping you can't swim. They don't want to know anything about your journey or to ride the struggle train with you on the days you've almost given in. But by God, they'll be the first to expect to sit their ass in the limo when you triumph when you win. Number six, they act like they're always doing you the favors. Give me a boom in the comments if you've known these kinds. I know I sure as hell have. People that you've got absolutely nothing to gain by helping, but you've spent hours and hours creating or working on something for their benefit. And they act like they're doing you the f f fucking favor by letting you sacrifice all your time for them. Like seriously, what's with that? Or you buy them something they need or give them valuable stuff to help them out. And then they act like they've done you this favor by taking it off your hands. You'll go out of your way for these people time and time again and they'll barely acknowledge you for it. Yet some other muppet will do or give something to them. Not even close to all that you've done or given to them. And they'll be up there rah, 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 singing their praises like it's bloody Christmas. Like of course we don't do it for that purpose but when we give of ourselves like that to others and they aren't even grateful. It's a bloody kick in the teeth and it hurts. These are lessons we have to learn in quitting our generosity where it's not appreciated. Fuck, fuck, fuck them. If others do so much more for them, let them stick with them. Number seven, they won't be accountable for anything negative. Oh, that ain't ever gonna happen. These glory hunting mung beans will be the first to speak up if they think credit's due for a job well done. But oh, if they're f f fucked up, you won't see them for dust. They won't ever admit their faults, their flaws, or anything of the like. But you can probably guarantee they'll be the first to point out yours or somebody else's. Same with yours or someone else's blunders or faux pas. Their ego will never allow them to take ownership of anything that doesn't serve the high opinion they have of themselves. We all stuff up, we all get things wrong. We all say stupid things, we all do stupid things. But not, not these supposed superior beings, they are always faultless. Number eight, they circle jump and clout chase. Oh, the clout chasing sad, sad wannabe. Nothing makes me cringe like a grown adult sucking up and clout chasing. Trying to ride the coattails of someone of highest standing or authority. Even the bloody di di dickheads that buy social media followers. Oh, if they think they'll get a leg up in life or if they think they'll look good or powerful, by association. They name drop and brown nose sickeningly. They'll be up there rah, 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 like a rat up a drain pipe if it serves their purpose. Even when it's clear they're riding coattails and using others. Number nine, they'll leave your messages on scene. Okay, so we've all done this if we've gotten distracted or been on the go. But those people who habitually leave your messages on scene but don't respond. Let's be real here. And I'm not talking about leaving the creepy messages we all get from time to time on scene never to be responded. They don't count. But those you're supposedly friends with or in mid-conversation with. Those that open your message and just fuck, fuck, fuck off devoid of response. Well they've given you a response, a bloody loud response. They're ignoramuses. Yep, bloody ignoramuses. They don't value your time. They don't value what you say. They don't value you. But you can bet rah, 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 they're on your message like white on rice if they want something from you. If they're your friend and they habitually ignore you, then they habitually don't deserve you. Number 10, they'll compare your triumph to others. I've covered this point before because in my opinion, this is an all too common trait. If your social media grows, they'll know someone who has more followers. If you get a new car, they'll know someone who has the upgraded model. Several years ago, I had a big media agency contact me wanting to run an article on me about my mum of five physique, which they saw as media worthy at the time. This was picked up by several other publications, including the Daily Mail. One friend, rather than being happy for me, said, oh, I've had heaps of friends with stories in the Daily Mail. But yet when I queried who, the subject was then turned onto their recent accomplishment. When our friends can't be happy for us, when they see our every little win or aspiration as a 
kissing competition. They are not here for us. They are like toxic fire to the core. Remember, true friends won't try to compete with you. They will be there cheering for you until they can cheer no fucking more. These people can never be who your heart needs them to be. They're riddled to the core with poison for your soul. Pure toxicity. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much. Before you go, don't forget to smash that sub button. Stay awesome. Break out of your shell.